a couple years down the road, you wake up. You you try to like open your eyes, but you're overwhelmed with a sensation of cold. Right? Like oh, no. you're like your eyes like won't open. And you go to like lift your hands to like wipe them and your arms like won't move. And again, just overwhelmed with cold. Like in, in a way that you've never felt before. Fuck. They say that your hearing is the first thing to come back. And that's true. What? Because before you can see anything or feel any sensation other than a brilliant, white hot, burning cold, <laughs> the only other thing you can sense are the pneumatics of the door opening above you. You try to look through your eyes, but again, it's like there's something covering them. Okay. You do see like a uh, very blurred, rough shapes. You do see like the change of lights as what a, something is passing over you. Hmm. You slowly start to regain sens sensation in the rest of your body and you, your equilibrium levels out and you, you're, you know, you're on your back. You're laying on your back. Everything is freezing cold. You hear the muffled sounds of what has to be people talking. It's like you're wearing 10 pairs of earmuffs. Fuck. This is so bad. Your vision slowly kind of starts to restore. You can you can move your fingers and toes, but the rest of you is pretty much like frozen in place. Your outermost layer uh, sort of thaws as you feel like a heat lamp. You can kind of like see it being like rolled over top of you, and you do feel like the remnants of heat Almost like from a star a million miles away. That's how little you feel it. <laughs> but you know that it's there. You hear a, a whirring sound. All of a sudden, you feel like something rattling in your ear. And then a moment later, just instant relief of pressure built up in your ear canal. Same thing on the other side, and you can hear again. Whoa. Like, not maybe not as good as always, but it's definitely, like, workable. And you hear some, you hear a soft feminine voice. And it's the first voice you've heard in a long, long time. You feel uh, the hot breath of a doctor against your defrosting earlobe. You hear a female voice say, hang on, Pat, we're coming. Holy Over the shit. next hour, you are awoken from a hypersleep. What? Yeah, you are awoken from a hypersleep. Uh, it is now 3,024. What? You are a thousand years in the future Holy um, shit. from right now. You're a thousand years in the future being woken up from cryo sleep. You, uh, so basically uh, the end of 2024, uh, all hell breaks loose globally. There's a nuclear event and everybody starts shooting shit out of the sky. It's a very tense final few days on earth. And you happen to win a cryopod. You called into a, a radio show. <laughs> and, uh, they're like, the, the radio show was, uh, hey, everybody, this is Jason Light on WLAN, a LAX. And we're giving away <laughs> a free cryopod to the future. And they have like, future, future. Well, and he laughs. Right? Can't make this he goes, a prize. <laughs> Because they're one of our sponsors. Lanolax Cryopods. That's insane. Because the day's coming. 
right? So uh, you win a free cryopod. You're the the other. You you were the 69th caller to Jason Light. <laughs> Jason Light in the morning. He said, um, "What band is fronted by Fred Durst?" <laughs> and you like immediately dialed in. <laughs> you were number 69, right? And uh, and you said, "Well, technically, you know, you thought about like he's been in like multiple bands, you know." But then you're like, "Just stick with, just stick with it, Pat. Trust yeah, it, don't. you know." Don't overthink. What team did Michael Jordan play for? You know, that's pretty much the same question. Yeah. So Limp Biscuit is the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. They've had a bit of a renaissance, you know, the last few months. Two three peats. That's what some people call uh, the singles off of uh, chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. People in retrospect in twenty late twenty twenty four, Limp Biscuit has a revival oh, as no. the tension in the country ratchets ratchets up and all over the globe. The hotter the temperature gets, the more popular Limp Biscuit becomes. <laughs> People are like, "This is the perfect music for aggression and anxiety." Okay, and yeah. and misguided youth, you know, things of that nature. So, like, it has a comeback, and people were like, "Look, these six tracks." Really should have been like the two three peats of the of the of the nineties bulls. Like it's pretty much the same thing. So you okay. answer Limp Biscuit, you win a free cryopod to the future. And when shit really starts going off, you thank your lucky stars. Yeah, it's a good thing. Good thing I know you, about uh, music history. Yeah, really. <laughs> so you um, you know, when when shit really starts going off, you get an email from Lanolax Cryopods and they're like, hey. Your ship is taken off in two days. You have to get to Miami, Florida. Good Holy luck. Holy shit. So you do. You know, you talk to your family. You talk to your friends. Everybody's like, Pat, you have to. What if What if it works? You know, what if you can, what if you make it and nobody else does because we're all idiots and blow ourselves to hell. So you get on the ship. You say your goodbye to your loved ones. You blast off. You keep your eyes fixed on the same point out of the window until Earth is just a memory. Hmm. You're sealed into your cryopod and you're woken up in 3024. Do they still remember Limp Biscuit? That's the first thing you ask. And the doctor, <laughs> as you come up, you're like, Do you guys still remember Limp Biscuit? And the doctor looks at the other one. They go, "Yeah, there are oftentimes a lot of delusions when people come out of hypersleep. They go, it'll oh, pass." Okay. So they, uh, they, they warm you up. They give you a, a blanket. They give you a glass of warm milk. They get your uh, body temperature up to normal. They run vitals all you on you, right? And it's all women who are like working in this medical wing of this ship, essentially. Okay, right, and. Like, they're all like, you don't know if it's just the fact that you have, have not seen a woman in a millennium. But they are all like smoking hot babes. That's cool. Right. Big time. And well, you would future. swear you would do you. You're thinking that as you're getting like a <laughs> as you're like getting a bath. You think welcome to the future. You're sitting in a warm bath surrounded by beautiful doctors. <laughs> Okay. I guess it's cool. And you would also swear again, you don't know if this is the cryo sleep or not, but you swear that they are looking at you with intent. Like really? Yeah. These hippas don't lie, you know, like that kind of a thing where they're like, if I was not bound by my oath, you know, first do no harm. I would fuck this guy up. You know, they are like really, like in like the best way possible. You know. Well, how is that doing me harm? I feel like that. How does that violate the hypocrite? Well, whatever. They're just not allowed. You know, it's just it's a professional allowed, thing. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I guess it's yeah. I guess. But you're also reasonable. like you're like you're looking at these women. And you're like, if I'm being honest with myself. There's no way this woman is in my league. Oh wow. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, what the fuck is going on? And it seems yeah. like they're all like that, right? So you um, 
you spend the next like 24 hours under like observation with a very small team, you know, you're kept in a room, uh, you you're moved to like this other facility that's like not on a ship, but it's in a building, you know, they're running tests on you. They're doing blood work They're, You know, you have doctors and, you know, psychologists coming in and they're asking you a battery of questions and they're testing your cognitive skills and you're playing Jenga and you're dribbling a basketball and you're running on a treadmill and, you know, you're, you're eating their, their food from the year 3000, which, uh, it's not the and food in the year 3000. It's like whatever you want, but it's definitely like a nutrient paste, you know? Oh, okay. It's is, one anything, of those. is there anything else like super, do things seem super futuristic? Um, when you were in the ship, not really. But when you get into this building, it definitely feels like a leap forward in time. Wow. Where there you don't see any like wires on things. Um you know, everything is well lit. It's very sanitary. You see a robot like zipping along, sweeping up trash. You know, there's another robot that's like installing a light above a door. That's right. Cool. He look he looks at you and he nods. <laughs> I nod back. You nod back. He smiles. Goes back to putting the new light in. <laughs> I made a robot smile. That's so strange. Yeah. Fuck. And to be honest with you, it's the first time that guy's had a reason to smile in a long time. You know, he goes <laughs> really? home every day. Yeah, he goes home to his robot wife and yeah. his two robot kids. <laughs> and uh, he says to her, he's like, she says, how was the, how was the hospital? And he's like, it's another fucking day, Suzanne. You know, he's like, yeah, every, all of my work goes unnoticed. You know, man, I can barely afford to keep bolts on the table. Robots eat bolts. So, you know, like. He's like really struggling, you know, wow, and okay. you nodding to him, acknowledging his presence really it was the thing that kind of like pulled him along for the next several weeks. So you get your battery at test run again. Every doctor is like gorgeous, right? It's very weird. Yeah. This whole thing you weird. um, you're in the hospital, like I said, for like a full 24 hours, all these tests, all these doctors talking to you. <clears throat> Finally, the um. The head of the hospital walks in. She's uh six feet tall. Legs for days. All right. Tight Auburn Bob. She sits down at your uh your table next to your your bed and she goes, Hello, Patrick. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Diane. Field, 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 field. My name is Dr. Diane Field, field, and I run this hospital. And uh, she goes, she goes, I, uh, I just wanted to come in and, and brief you. I know answers have been a little bit sparse and information has been limited. She goes, but I, I think that it's, it's time we discuss what's happened. She says, uh, you remember your final moments on Earth, right? Your your long term memory has not been impacted. Is that correct? She's got a she's got a, like a like a futuristic clipboard, like a hologram on there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember everything. Also, is she, her her last name is it field dash like field or is it just field no, field? It's One field word. field. Okay. All yep. right. Just curious. Uh yeah, I, I do remember. I E L D F E I L D. Oh holy shit. Oh man, and right. uh, she says, she says, yeah, because my family has been in, was in the United States for a long time, and it was originally Field, but because uh, my great 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 grandparents couldn't agree on the spelling, so they just put them both together. We were the Field Fields ever since. Wow, that is all right. She goes, "Yep, you're not going to get that on Mars," <laughs> and your eyes kind of light up. She goes, "Oh, by the way, we're on Mars." Oh man. She goes, the Landmarks Corporation sent the ship to repopulate the nearest uh, planet. He says, we've been able to successfully do, tho- do so based on their technology. She goes, and the last part of our, uh, the last part of our colonization was attempting to revive those that arrived here from Earth. She goes, now we feel like things are stable enough that we can reintroduce, you know, you guys into the population. Okay. And she Man. goes, Pat, I got to be honest with you. We have been 
completely unsuccessful so far. Dang. She says out of the 500 people that were aboard this ship, you are the last one and you are the only one to come out of cryo sleep. Whoa. Tears well up in her eyes. She goes, we are just so incredibly thankful to have you. She says, welcome home. Jeez. Uh, you stand up under your own power. Yeah. The fucking news is there. So again, a lot of women, every, and you kind of like, you're, you're again, like a lot of like flash bulbs are going off, you know, like it's a big media event apparently. And uh, you can kind of like make out through the flash bulbs that they're like, they're look to be men in the crowd, but the men you see are wearing like masks of like another man's face. You know, like it's just like okay. weird, like yeah. like it's like like a, like a Halloween mask, but it's like a like a man's face, like a normal looking man's face. These are like the journalists that are there taking pictures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, taking pictures. You know, cameraman. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 stuff like that. So you uh, <clears throat> you know, you you talk to Doctor Fieldfield. The images that are captured there are, uh, they, I mean, they go down in history as some of the most important of the entire human species. Um, it's a truly landmark event, and you, uh, like you know, you'll we'll, we'll uh, there, there's like a government envoy there, and they're gonna get you set up in housing and like make sure you're taken care of, and they they want you to really spend the rest of your time being a historian to what times were really like on Earth, and so you sure. they're like you are basically going to write the truest possible history you can of your time on earth and what you know about it. Like you are, you Man. are the most valuable resource that human history has at this point. Holy shit. This is so intense. Right. So you, um, you know, you, you agree, right. Yeah. And you like, uh, you meet with its envoy. They set you up in like a house, right. That's on, I mean, it's all, it's all like a pretty primitive setup. You know, they, they have like, they're, they're sort of village like, like the, the, there are like places of commerce. There are places of gathering, but there's there's maybe like three thousand people there, like tops. Like it's not a huge amount of people that they're like growing the civilization. Okay. And they tell you that there are a couple of them on Mars, and that you guys are all within like an hour and a half rover travel away. So you 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 are attempting to like spread further out onto the surface of Mars, right? The other, yeah, uh, the other, yeah. the other little towns on Mars send a delegation. They bring you food and flowers and art, and they, oh. they, it, it's like a huge celebration, right? What are the towns' names? So there is, uh, there is, uh, there are three of them. The one, the, so there, the, the two on the out. So the one that you're in is the oldest one. That one is called, um. Uh, it's called Staples because the Staples company bought the rights to the first, <laughs> they bought the naming rights to the first settlement on Mars. Staples is still around. Oh no, they got it obliterated when nukes started flying. There is no Staples, but um, you oh, know, the bummer. people of the people of Mars felt that it was, you know, sort of like a link to the past and their, their duty to the species to like honor that contract faithfully. Okay. So the first you're you're in Staples. <laughs> uh the other two the other two towns, one is called uh Philadelphia West and one is called Philadelphia East. <laughs> and they do not like each other. Really? Yeah. Even in like a new world? No, they don't. Why? I uh, there's just you know, I mean you haven't been around long, but you know. Uh, West Philadelphia was established first, then East Philadelphia, and these two brothers, the Connolly brothers, Gary and Dawson, they ran West Philadelphia with an iron fist, right? And then when the when the uh, Mars Expansion Coalition said that, hey, we're going to open up East Philly, they they split up the brothers, and Dawson ran East Philly, uh, and then really? it just, it, there was just like a, a whole thing of like it was a, it was a competition that turned violent, and blood has been spilled. If you meet halfway between East and West Philadelphia on the surface of Mars, you will find a headstone. Yeah. It says R.I.P. Dawson. 
And then underneath it, it says beloved brother. Whoa. So, you know, you're like, but you don't have to worry about that because you're in Staples, right? Amazing. You got the big, you got the big time. Yeah. So you, um, they put you up in a little place, right? And it's your first day, like on your own. And you walk out, you breathe the margin air through your rebreather. And you think, okay, this is, this is like, you, you, you look back at the speck where earth used to be. And you think, man, I'm glad to even be alive. Yeah. I mean, what else can I do? I got to keep going. So you start walking through town. And again, even though you've been like cognizant and awake and with it now for a few uh, earth days, you know, okay. you um, you're looking around and every single woman that you see is stunningly beautiful. Yeah, I think I would eventually like, ask about this in, in a way that is like. Like the, the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your entire life, there's a hundred of them that you've encountered so far. What about dudes? And, and so, again, the women, they look at you with a longing that you've never felt before, right? They look at you with a red hot intensity that they can barely hide behind their eyes. Every man you see is wearing like a mask, again, of like with another man's face on it. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like a normal man's face, you know? Okay, it's like so it's I, not like an it's not like a Ryan Gosling mask. It's just like a random normal human man's face. Then I would walk up to one of them and I would go, I would I would introduce myself and I would say this is going to this might sound strange, but I just woke up from I was in like a high in like a she fans thing. herself. She's like she's like you I'm talk, he goes, talking to a guy. I thought you were talking to, to a woman. No, no, no. I'd walk up to one of those well, guys wearing the masks. and I'd, I'd, You I'd... walk up to a guy wearing a mask, and uh, he turns around, and then he pulls his mask off, and it's a beautiful woman. She's like, sorry. I was just like, I'm in, I mean, I was in costume <laughs> as a man. She kind of fans herself. And she's like, you don't have to introduce yourself. She goes, we all know who you are. Okay. Well. She was like, he's like, how weird is it right now? It's You're a thousand weird. years in the future. Everything is weird. She, she brushes her strawberry blonde hair out of her blue eyes. <laughs> yeah. And when you see it, you see the color of her eyes and you think it's the last color of earth that you saw as you rocket it away. Yeah. The same color as the ocean. When you were a third of the way to the moon, it's the same color of her eyes. Jeez. All right. I think I would go. I would I would say to her, well, first of all, how come you were wearing how uh, so everyone who's wearing a mask is a is secretly a woman or what? No, uh... she's like she's like no. She goes that's that's the guys, that's the fellas. She's like <laughs> I, I was she's what the hell? she's like I she's like I'm an actress. Okay, that's cool. She's I guess like a, you know. Okay, she, well, yeah, could... I'm an actress. She goes she goes the men up here. She uh kind of like bites her lip and she goes, let's just say they're not as good looking as you are. Okay. That is so intense. All right. I guess I would go, look, I, I've, I got to catch up on a lot of stuff. Do, um, I, do you guys still have coffee? She kind of points over her shoulder. She goes, yeah, the, she goes, there's a, a coffee spot right up there in the commissary. Okay. Would you like to get some coffee and tell me about what I've missed? Cause I don't, I, I got a lot of questions. She goes, you want to get coffee with me? Yes. And she kind of, she blushes. She goes, don't you think you're like a little out of my league? Like, to be fair. <laughs> I would say, I would just go, no, I, I, I wouldn't say that. She goes, that's I'll really sweet of you to say. So this is part of what I was going to ask you about. <clears throat> this is going to sound uh, odd, but I'm just going to say it. It it seems like every woman that I meet is like like stunningly beautiful, and I don't to uh to she a goes, absurd Aw. degree. No, she goes, but like, like she goes, she blushes. She goes, "That's so cute, Pat." <laughs> she okay. goes, "Coming from a man that looks like you," and she again she bites her fucking lip. God damn it! All right, she's like, I never in a million years would have imagined I'd end up with a man as handsome as you are. She goes with all the guys on this planet. What do you? She kind of laughs. 
what's up with the guys on this planet? She kind of like scans around the perimeter. She goes, she just screams. She goes, Walter, get over here. You see this guy run over. He's kind of huffing and puffing. Yeah. He's got a mask on. She yanks his mask off, and it is the ugliest man you've ever seen in your life. Wow. Just ugly, gnarled features. Okay. Hawkmarked skin. Patchy. Hair. Just it doesn't even almost borderline looks like not human. The face of an ugly man. Yeah. So she goes, wait. Did men not look like this from your time? No. You're saying so it all- turns out yeah. that uh the male body does not adapt well to the pressures of space. And generations of human males have been born in in, in a place that does not allow their features to grow naturally. So all okay. the men who are on Mars that are born on Mars are fucking ugly. Wow. Right. And they're so ugly that if they want to hang out with the beautiful women, the women have only gotten more beautiful over time. Because most of the women that were on board were chosen because of their beauty. It was a very vapid process, as I'm sure you can imagine. So all like <laughs> the ugliness has been like bred out of women. Holy right? shit. Okay. To the wow. extent that like everybody is like a supermodel level attractiveness. And men have kind of gone the opposite way. So they huh. unfreeze you and you are without the sh- a shadow of a doubt. The most handsome man. On all of Mars. Wow. And you feel every pair of beautiful eyes on you. So you're there. This gets explained to you. You kind of like connect the dots. Yeah. And you, you kind of like leave. You're like, hey, I'm sorry. I, I need to process. I have to go. Right. You just kind of leave. Yeah. You see, she breaks down in tears. You walk back to your room. I'm sorry. The pitter patter with the little clouds of red dust beneath each one of your shoes. Yeah. You uh, talk to Dr. Field field. You give her a call and you're like, Hey, here's what I'm being told. And she was like, well, uh, I didn't want to say anything because it would have been unprofessional. She goes, but yeah, that's exactly what's happened. She goes, there hasn't been a man here that um, nearly as attractive as you since we huh. founded this colony. She goes, in fact, if men want to hang out with us, they have to wear they have to wear mask, a mask. Yeah. That's how that's how ugly they are. Yeah. And she goes, me. to be frank, not you know, this was a big point of uh this was a very divisive rule. And I I this is something I haven't told you. She goes, Well, when that occurred, a large section of men burrowed underground. There is a oh, colony fuck. that has burrowed into Mars and they oh. are they call themselves the maskless, and they are they will refuse to wear masks so they live beneath the surface out of their hideousness. And they know that if they come up here, we will destroy them. Destroy them? You hear a, you hear a, a like a light buzzing noise, like like something powering on. She goes, "Yeah, we'll destroy them." Why? They're that ugly. She goes, "Pat, they are hideous." Okay. She goes, "And we can't trust them." Why? They ref- they refuse to live with us on our terms. They said the mistakes made on Earth will not be made here. <laughs> what? What does that mean? But, you know, like women are going to run shit this time around. And it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be this fucking male dominated society. OK, so they're putting fine. their foot down and setting conditions for under which they want their, the men to live. OK, whatever. Well, and she goes, but yeah. she goes, but you, she goes, trust me, Pat, you do not need a mask. To put a mask over that mug would be criminal. Wow. Thank you. So, over this the next is, couple months... This might be the best one we've ever done. This fucking rules. Over the next couple of months, you, like, suck and oh. fuck <laughs> your way across Staples. <laughs> you spend a week in East Philly. You spend a week in West Philly. Yeah. You that impregnate kind of, several oh women across all three colonies of Mars, right? It's almost encouraged, right? Well, yeah. Okay. And then uh, you know, you're you're leaving uh in another one of your your ladies, one of her homes in West Philadelphia. You Boy, get into right. your rover. You uh, hop in. 
and you see there's just like a bloody mask sitting on the passenger seat. Oh, fuck. So you kind of like look around, right? You uh, you take a photo of it. You send it to Dr. Fieldfield. She's overseeing like your, basically your life at this point. You yeah, know? okay. As like part of this experiment. And they go, the well, and she goes, well, Pat, this certainly is concerning. She goes, but I, I don't think it's anything to worry about. She goes, you're a celebrity around here. Everybody knows you. That night, you're giving a talk about uh, the 90s. It's called. Oh, wow. Well. It's called Earth, colon, the 1990s, colon. What was that about? <laughs> and it's you. It's you giving a talk to anybody who will want to listen, frankly. And it's you talk about the 90s, right? You talk about uh, the Chicago Bulls, right? <laughs> You talk about Michael Jordan. You talk about Michael Jackson. You the talk first, about my girl. The first thing that I talk about, in all honesty, is Limp Biscuit, because it technically saved my life. And the fact that no one seems to remember them, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's a tragedy, but I, I just think that they should know that it that it was Limp Biscuit that saved my life. Yeah. So you you know you start. I leave you, with Limp the, Biscuit. The, the lights, the lights come up. Right. Yeah. And you, uh, the curtain opens and you're standing there with a mic in your hand. You're wearing a pair of Jinko jeans that were handcrafted for you. You're wearing a, a <laughs> South Pole t-shirt that they made. Whoa. Right. You got a red cap on backwards. And you come out and you perform rolling in its entirety. Right. You perform it. Right. You sing every line. By the end of it, the people like jaws are on the fucking floor. Really? You're, you're breathing heavily. You know, you're like really, <laughs> really into it. And you go, that was Limp Biscuit, And Limp Biscuit saved my life. Yeah. And you go the 90s. What was that about? And you like launch into the whole thing. Right. You talk about you talk about the, oh, the proliferation that. of the Internet. Yeah, and how like that forever changed humanity and connected everyone, and how it was arguably the most important invention, you know, this side of like fucking electricity or whatever. Yeah. So you you present this whole thing, right? You're uh, you you talk about Princess Diana, you know, you talk about uh, fucking Forrest Gump, right? You you talk about all the. It's like <laughs> it's honestly like. It's not like a very well informed talk. You know, you can basically like talk about your favorite shit for oh, two man. hours. Yeah. That's <laughs> that fucking rules though. You have a great time doing I it. I just and talk everybody's about hanging on your every word. Yeah, I'm just talking about stuff that I like to uh, to yeah. I'm assuming a, a a crowd of beautiful women, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean what's and a bunch of men in masks. Uh, right, of course. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's hanging on your every word, and the crowd is building and building as your time goes by. You look out into like, you look out into fucking space, you know? Yeah. You look out into the blackness of space. And you think about home. And how, even though you may never smell a rose, right? Or have a medium rare steak perfectly cooked on a grill on Memorial Day weekend, you know? You're not going to have that. You're yeah. never going to dip your toes into pool water that makes you go, oh, I'm going to need a little bit. You're never going to have that again. You kind of get choked up talking about the things yeah. that made you the person that you were. Yeah. You give this huge talk, right? You uh, walk off stage to an uproar of applause. Bras, panties getting thrown. That's that has never left our society, right? Space could not take that away from us. You're getting pelted with so many brassiers. Really? Oh yeah, dozens. Cool. All right, that's cool. Yeah, you keep them all. Uh, so you you know, like you go home, <laughs> right? Oh, weird. Yeah, okay. You uh, weird. That is. You so walk. Weird. Uh, you go. You put them all in a drawer. You go grab a glass of water from your kitchen <laughs> and you walk outside and you sit there in the stillness 
of the Martian night. And you see what you think is the sun way off in the distance, you know? Yeah. You sip that Martian water and you think, I'm going to do better this time around. I'm going to make more of myself this time around. Hmm. You drink the last from the water. You kind of stand up. You were sitting on like a, a rock ledge. You stand up. You kind of dust the red dirt off your pants. Yeah. You turn to walk back home. And uh, there's like a very ugly man standing in front of you. And he says, you're ruining it for all of us. And he hits you on the head with a Martian rock. No. <laughs> he cracks your head open. Uh, the glass falls and just fucking shatters right on a bunch of stone. And you, uh, he like... He like uh just beats you. He beats your head in with oh, this rock, and then he no. then he like he goes to hide your body. He's pulling oh. you into the, he's pulling you into an underground cave, yeah. and he drags you over that broken glass, and it cuts your face. And you're oh. never beautiful. They find your body, and when they find your body, your face is all fucked up and cut up. And the the doctor who finds your body is Doctor Peelfield. She goes, "Ooh, yucky." <laughs> and Not they put a mask. They put a mask on your face. And they, oh. they throw you, they throw you off the planet. <laughs> they put a little rocket. There's like a little chair with a rocket on the bottom. They strap you to it and they press a button and you go, ready they shoot your ugly ass off of Mars. For what? Why? What? Why? They just didn't want to have you there. I don't know. The final insult. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your well, your ugly body just freezes in outer space. Whatever. But it orbits Mars. <laughs> so like once once a year. They uh they yeah. have like a ceremony where they go to the rock where you were beaten and bloodied yeah. and uh and they they wait for your body to come back around in orbit and they catch it or they like, watch it and they go, man, what might have been. And they all shake their heads and then as soon as your body's out of visual sight line they just go back, and then they wait for your body for another year. Man, you're stuck orbiting Mars. <laughs> well, I mean. It sounds like I had a pretty rad weekend leading up to this, at least. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you did. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> Fuck. Damn, what, did, what happened to all the colonies of, on Mars? Oh, East and West Philadelphia wind up tearing each other apart. Oh, and, fuck. Uh, refugees from those two colonies overran Staples and just ruined it. It was it was wiped out. <laughs> Humanity gets wiped out within the next 25 years. <laughs> The only remnants left are a frozen body strapped to a chair, rotating around our red brother on the other side of the asteroid belt. You have the dumbest look on your face. <laughs>